all of you who feel like you need the secret sauce or what are the tips and tricks and the, the method for getting into this mystical place of medical school, keep watching. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Bernice. I am currently a fourth year medical student who is also doing a master's in public policy. I'm doing this video today to demystify the process of getting into medical school. You will also likely see my beautiful doggy nephew, Mr. Muggles. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what he's gonna do in this video. He might start hopping around or jumping around. Don't be startled. He is super sweet. You're sweet, right, Mr. Muckles? He's a, a little Pomeranian. It's my roommate's dog and I love him so much. The way that this video is gonna be broken up, I'm going to start talking to high school students first. I'm gonna walk you through the process from high school all the way to um, those who are waiting to hear back about acceptances. You do not need to know that you wanna be a doctor this early. Some people decide all the way from age eight. Some people decide into their 30s. But if you know this early, um, the only thing that you really um, can be doing for yourself at this point would be choosing a college that is going to offer classes that you're interested in and that offer um, pre-med classes, especially if you're thinking that you're gonna do the pre-med classes while you're in college. Just make sure that the college that you're choosing has those classes. Otherwise, you'll probably have to take those classes either during your summer months or um, during um, a post grad program or something like that. There are a few different summer programs that introduce people to the healthcare field. Definitely feel free to explore those. That might even be how you knew that you wanted to be a doctor this early. Find yourself, find your passions, um, and that's the main thing. Once you have started the college process, um, there are a couple of things to consider. One, you do not have to be a hard science major. You don't have to major in biology, biochemistry. If that is your passion, if that's what you wanna spend your four years studying and you wanna do all of your scholarly work in that, absolutely pursue it. But do not feel pressure to study those things because you feel like that's the only way I'm gonna be able to get into medical school. In fact, more and more people as the years keep going on are majoring in non-science majors and that can be psychology that can be music i have friends who are doctors who did so theater film so many fascinating things and it's because those were the things that they were interested in doing and they wanted to spend their time doing that while also doing the pre-med coursework because we all have a set of standard requirements that we have to fill so you will fill those and also you can do your other, um, pursue your other interests. And this is the time to do that. I personally um, majored in uh, anthropology and then did a minor in global health and health policy. And those things were, were fascinating to me. So don't be afraid to major outside of science. Now, I would be remiss if I did not honestly tell you that numbers do matter in this process. That means that the classes that you take, especially the science classes, it is going to make this process so much easier if you perform as well as possible in those. I know it is easier said than done sometimes. These classes can be very challenging and the pre-med course load can be very, very heavy because you have to take biology, chemistry, biochemistry, um, physics, uh, calculus there's so many things that you have to take and so obviously because you just have a set number uh, amount of time a lot of times you're taking these classes simultaneously and you're trying to do your best it is challenging getting a tutor if your school offers that um, going to office hours um, meet, meeting meeting with your professor or your ta and going over materials separately outside of lecture joining a study group with some of your peers who maybe understand the material and, and want to work with other people um, to do it. Just discovering your study style, that's going to be the most important. They do look at your GPA, they do look at especially your science GPA, so whatever you can do to succeed here will help you. Another important thing to consider in this process is that you're eventually going to need letters of recommendation. And in order to get professors who can write those for you, 
it's gonna be important to get to know those professors. And I totally understand that in a lot of schools, the pre-med classes, so your introductory chemistry, biology, those classes are going to be large, sometimes hundreds of people, and it can be difficult to get to know the professor. Try your best. So that means, like I mentioned, going to office hours, meeting with them one-on-one, -on -one, um, sitting in the front row and being engaged, asking questions, um, and and just just doing your best to cultivate a relationship as you can. If you can't with the professor, then at least with your TA, cultivate a relationship with them to potentially get a letter um, as needed. But the, the biggest thing is that you're gonna wanna get a letter from someone who knows you and can attest to your positive qualities, your work ethic, your passion, your intelligence, things like that. Um, so the other thing that you wanna consider is as soon as you can after a class ends, that's when you're gonna want to ask for a letter of recommendation. Um, and, and it doesn't mean that the person has to write it right at that moment. It could be that you just ask them or at least let them know that you're going to eventually need a letter and will they be willing to eventually write a letter on your behalf. But as soon as possible, just so they can at least jot down some notes or some specific anecdotes of when they were working with you and um, incorporate those into a letter for you. Another thing to consider in your application will be your extracurricular activities. You want to find your passions. What are the things that make you so excited or when you talk about them, you light up a little bit? Um, because those are the types of things that you're going to be able to demonstrate leadership and and really take on so um so find what those extracurricular activities are and, and make them be something that's enjoyable for you um the other thing that you're going to want to do in addition to your leadership experiences will be trying to get some clinical experience and so the most classic way to get clinical experience and get exposure to clinical settings is to shadow doctors. Um, so that even could be your family practitioner or just somebody in the community, maybe somebody who's at a medical school um, affiliated with the college that you attend and just watching what they do day to day. But I've actually found and a lot of the people who I've talked to agree that it's even better if you can do something hands-on that's clinical. And so that might be being a medical scribe, meaning that you write the, you type the notes for doctors or being a um, medical assistant, a phlebotomist, or um, in my case, what I did was I was a Spanish to English interpreter. And that was something that was really, um, something that I was really passionate about because I'm passionate about serving that population and um, util utilizing my language ability in that way. Um, and so that kind of felt like it was a little bit more interactive than just shadowing. The other benefit of doing clinical experiences early is that you are exposed to different types of medicine. Now you don't need to know your specialty this early. You don't need to know it until towards the end of medical school, but it definitely is a benefit if you are able to see some of the different type of specialties that exist and, and maybe determine that, oh wow, I am very interested in, in orthopedic surgery or I'm interested in radiology or whatever the case is and have that mindset at least going in so you have something to consider once you start medical school. Now, you're probably gonna change your mind and that is totally fine, but just even having some exposure that can lead you in or give you a little bit of a, um, a, a point of comparison is always very helpful. There are additionally some summer programs that you can do while you're in college that are targeted for people who are interested in pre-health. And there are even ones that are targeted to underrepresented minorities, so those who are traditionally not as well represented in, in medicine they have there are programs that really target those populations so that we can get them adequately represented to serve in this field now a note on the mcat this is just like grades like i mentioned before this is another one of those numbers that will make your process easier if you do better on it there are different ways to um, go about it. Some people take this while they're in college. Maybe they have um, a break or a summer that they're gonna study for it. Some people will wait until um, 
after college, there's different times to take it. Um, and it's gonna totally depend on your own schedule and your own circumstances. Um, it can be really helpful to take a, a, a preparatory class. So there's in-person classes or you can use the study books. Um, some people are very disciplined and they are able to create a schedule for themselves and just stick to it and they get their work done better that way. And other people might need um, some accountability from having classmates around and just working with them. And in those cases, you just have to know yourself and know your study style, and that's gonna best dictate what um, the best plan for you will be. This, these exams and these prep classes, these are expensive. They cost a lot of money, and I, and I don't want these things to be hidden costs for people. Take a year off at least, or multiple years off after you graduate college. It makes a world of a difference. You're able to get some life experience, see some things outside of school, because at that point you've probably gone through, gone to school straight for so long. Um, you're able to explore. You might do a health-related thing, you might not, but if you do a health-related thing, you can maybe explore and see where your health interests are. You're able to meet more people, um, have a little bit of time to enjoy your life uh, before you start on this path. It makes it easier to take the MCAT because you have a little bit more uh, time flexibility so you don't have to try to squeeze it in while you're still in college and taking other classes. Um, you gain skills that you might not have otherwise been able to gain. And, and honestly, this is now becoming the norm. We are well past half of applicants at this point who have taken a year off. And so once you get on the interview trail, you have much more that you can talk about and explain about how you've determined that medicine actually is something that you wanna do. And, and, and it's, just, it's just a little bit richer. Now, there are these programs, once you've graduated college, called post-baccalaureate programs that you can attend in case maybe you decided late that you want to go to medical school and you didn't have a chance during college to do the prerequisites at that time. That gives you the opportunity and also perhaps there were different challenges that you faced during college and you weren't able to perform the way that you wanted to. You're also able to use post-baccalaureate programs to improve your performance and improve your overall profile whenever you apply to medical school.